Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Both joined by Drew Galloway, and we are here with some good news for K-State football. It just keeps coming for them. They get Dylan Edwards over the weekend out of the transfer portal, and now maybe this in some weird roundabout way is also going to help be kind of the lid lifter for 2025 high school recruiting because up until this point, K-State had only had one commit. That was their quarterback, Dylan Duff, out of St. Louis. They now add a linebacker from the state of Texas, Weston Polk, is the latest member of the K-State class. And you see there, he's not ranked by any of the recruiting services at this point in time, but here's what you need to know. You see the offers there. Those are just the notable ones. So he has other Big 12 offers and inexplicably an ACC <laughs> offer uh, to throw in there with Cal. And like this is a guy, we talked about him mm, probably a couple weeks or a month or two ago, and he's basically just his entire life has been built up to him being a really good football player has been playing varsity football since his freshman year in Texas, which is not the easiest thing to do. K-State is getting a really, really good linebacker here. Yeah, it, it's funny. And, like, I, I don't want to, like, spike the football for this because timeline was a little off. But remember, we, this is – this is the – Weston Polk is the commitment that we said was probably going to be the next one for the 2025 class. I know that, that feels like it was, like, two years ago at this point. But he still was the second one. K-State did a really good job recruiting him throughout. And really from the time that K-State offered until maybe two, three weeks ago, like it just felt like it was a pretty imminent commitment to the point where like you, I know people like the behind the scenes of stuff that goes on and like what we do. And they always ask like, do you have a commitment story ready for this player, this player, this player? The Weston Polk one was in the chamber for a while. And then, it, so it was nice to be able to publish that in case it got over the hump. And up until a few weeks ago, it was probably K State up ahead by a large margin. TCU made it a little bit interesting, but ultimately, what K State did, and I think that the fit at K State really is what set them over the edge compared to like somebody like TCU. Yeah, I mean, this is this is and this is one of those things where we always tell people if you don't see a ranking or a ranking is lower than what like it doesn't excite you, you know, four stars and five stars that gets people excited. But when it's three, you're kind of like, oh, OK, run in the middle. If it's two or less, people are like, what's this guy's problem? Why is he coming to my school? This is another one where you compare the offers and you think of who's in play there. TCU. Sonny Dykes took him to a national championship, so there's respect there. Willie Fritz is at Houston now. Tons of respect for what he does. Obviously, Matt Campbell has stabilized Iowa State's program to levels they've never seen before. Like, There's a lot of things to like about who was trying to get in on Weston Polk and who K-State was able to beat out. And this is also one of those that feels like it's kind of a good assertion of dominance, where D.Y. and I just talked earlier today about kind of the pecking order in the new Big 12 and you know, you have the incumbents from the original Big 12 of K-State and Oklahoma State that you think will be at the top. Utah and Arizona seem to be factoring into the mix. And then KU's probably scratching to try and be in that mix right now with Lance Leipold. But you want to be able to, if K-State's in a recruiting battle with Houston or Iowa State or TCU, you want to be able to flex your muscle as saying, hey, we're, we're hiring the pecking order in the Big 12. And they did that here with Weston Polk. Yeah, th I think that's kind of the biggest takeaway here is that K State was able to more or less just kind of shove the other programs to the side because K State was, I believe, later than Houston and Iowa State in offering Weston Polk and really just jumped out to the lead as soon as they offered. He immediately visited, visited again over the or during the spring. And, and I think that it really shows to what K State is building and what the culture is like. Because if you really look at Weston Polk's recruitment from the outskirts, he visited TCU, I think, the most out of all the schools. And he just didn't like the fit in the culture at TCU as much as he did, as he did at K-State to the point where he visited K-State twice. And I think he visited TCU twice just during, during this springtime. He visited TCU at least two or three times. So I think that that means something to the point where K-State's building enough to be able to really kind of just cast aside a highly respectable program like TCU at this point. Yeah, well, and that's and that's all good news to see where things are going because we saw last year how teams kind of 
continued off of their success, TCU obviously took a step back. Now, they lost a lot of their talent from the national championship team, but it was no doubt a really disappointing year in Fort Worth for them. And so you you have to be able to sustain. Chris Kleiman's done that now over five years, and this is a good get for them. In terms of how Weston Polk actually fits into the, the lineup and how K-State could utilize him, what are they looking at in this type of linebacker? Uh, right now, it looks like that he'll either be a Will or a Sam linebacker. Just kind of depends on where his body goes. I mean, I if you look at the weightlifting videos that he's posted, you can tell that he's getting stronger by the week. I believe he did like a 335 deadlift a couple weeks ago. So he's just continually to get stronger. And you just kind of see where his body takes him because he's he can play either spot right now, I think. And it's nice, too, that you're seeing how the 335 defense has evolved, not just in college, but in high school. So it's nice that he also plays the Will or the Sam, uh, depending on the package in high school. So he won't have as much of a hurdle, like trying to figure out how to play, because playing linebacker in the 335 is a lot harder than the 425 because you're, you have less guys up front. You have to know how to use your leverage, when to go. So I, I think that that plays a big factor in him seeing the field earlier on. And I think that you're seeing this more and more with the linebacker products that or prospects that K-State's going after that a lot of them in high school already played the 335, so they don't have that extra hurdle to kind of go through when they get to K-State. Well, and it feels like we say this a lot, about a lot of other other positions when it comes to K-State and guys that they're looking at, there's a lot of flexibility there. Yes. Yeah, they, they especially at linebacker, it seems like they don't really hone in on one position unless that you, they think that you're a Mike linebacker. Like, there wasn't a lot of flexibility with like somebody like Boone Morris, but Jake Stonebreaker was somebody that they were like, okay, Will or Sam. Kind of depends on how he kind of works his body out too. So the two of so bringing in uh, another guy like Weston Polk that can play the Will or the Sam is probably something that they need. I, I also think that they probably only need one more linebacker, maybe a second if they really need it or want it. I, I'd consider a second linebacker more of like a luxury position at this point. Uh, but McGuire Richmond is somebody to really think about and really like hone in on if you are a fan looking at what case they can do next at linebacker. All good stuff to know about the latest K-State commit. Number two in the class, so K-State starting to add to it and uh, seems like, you know, in the near future, more could come on. I mean, that, that I guess, is the last thing we can hit on here. Uh, when do you think the next high school commitment comes for K-State? We've, we've talked about it a lot. I know people are interested in it because they want to make sure that, you know, K-State's not falling behind here with anything, but where where are we trending to? Next, I don't know a specific time because I could see it happening before the official visit, but it could just happen after. Uh, but Will Kimna, an offensive lineman from uh, the Missouri uh, area, I think that he is somebody to really hone in on, and he's probably the next. If I was a betting man right now, he would probably be my leader in the clubhouse to the point where there was a little period yesterday when I mean, we were talking that we thought that he could have been the commitment yes, yesterday. So I think that he's somebody to really keep in mind to be number three. Uh, another one is also the same official visit weekend. So it might be who is first uh, is Lucas Allgaier, another offensive lineman from St. Louis. I think that K-State's in a really good spot for both of them. And having them both visit with Dylan Duff, who is, uh, again, obviously like a St. Louis guy, and has a strong relationship with those two. I think that you're seeing K-State really make inroads in Missouri, and I think that you're going to see that pay off big time in this cycle. All right, well, we will see how it all works out for the Cats, but at the end of the day, good to add number two and uh, see if it starts kind of a trend of more guys wanting to hop in earlier, and uh, we'll have more on the Weston Polk commitment and anything else going down with K-State recruiting over at kstateonline.com. So go find on three. We've got coverage over there, both basketball and football for you. So for Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Both. Thanks for watching K-State Online.